Hi Cooking Cronies, Diana here. I want to talk to you a little bit about the basics of cooking. And so I'm calling this Back to Basics. I've had friends and family um, talk to me about the correct utensils or equipment to use when they're cooking. And so I wanted to just review that with everyone since a lot of people really aren't informed. So um, first of all, let's just talk about when you're getting ready to cook, make sure that your, your cooking area is clean, um, that you're starting with clean surfaces, that you have all the equipment, all the utensils, all, all the uh, measuring cups, everything that you're going to need is there for you. Uh, your recipe that you're going to follow, you want to make sure that you've read that thoroughly so that uh, you can pre-prep a lot of your ingredients, especially if you're new to cooking. You um, may not be fast enough to, say, dice an onion uh, when it's needed and you're still dicing it and something's burning on your stove. So you want to make sure that everything is pre-measured. And that brings me to uh, several items that you need when you are measuring um, items. So there's a difference in in measuring cups. You use uh, glass measuring cups that have um, a pour spout in them, for instance. Um, I have two different ones. I have a two cup and a one cup. And when you're measuring liquid, you set it on a flat surface and get down to eye level so that you are looking at the one cup mark and you're not looking above it or beyond it but or under it, but you're looking eye level to where you, your mark is, whether it's a, a fourth of a cup or a whole cup. But this is the type of uh, measuring cup you need for a liquid. When you are measuring dry ingredients, you use these, you use what I call stackable, um, st stackable measuring cups. And these were, I've had these a long time and they're from Pampered Chef, but they come all the way from a quarter of a cup to one cup. So depending on what your recipe says, that would um, tell you which measuring cup to use. These have a little um, more cups than the norm that you can get like at um, a, a dollar store or wherever where they're just going to have one cup, half cup, and a quarter cup. Uh, these have um, smaller portion amounts and I love them. I also have purchased from Pampered Chef this nice little handy dandy which does both liquid and um, dry ingredients. So for the liquid you hold it like this. You can see the the um, pour spout there, again, you get down to eye level to see how much um, of the ingredients you need to measure and then you uh, pour it. If you're doing dry ingredients and you flip it over and this will recess and you, I put it all the way down, say I only need a cup of, I like this for shortening actually, so I'll put it all the way down, put my shortening in the top of this and then um, make sure I'm getting all the air bubbles out. And then I'll raise it to whatever amount it is that I need. Say I just need a, a half a cup of shortening. So I'm gonna go here to the line that says half a cup and all that other excess shortening is gonna be up here and you get what I call, it's called a straight edge spatula and you scrape it across here to get the excess off. And then you can just continue to plunger that up into your bowl and voila, you've got exactly the measurement that you need. This spatula is also used when you're doing dry ingredients. So when you're measuring flour, for instance, you always want to sift your flour first and then spoon it into your measuring cup, what, however amount you need. And then you scrape this over the top to ensure that you're getting a level surface. So again, um, these are for dry ingredients. This is for wet ingredients. And this one from Pampered Chef, it, Chef, 
Pampered Chef, sorry, is for wet and dry ingredients. So um, just know that and it'll make life easier. I also keep a scraper uh, in my drawer so when I am dicing or chopping items, uh, it's easy to pick them up off of a, off of the surface um, like this. So you can take them off and put them in either your skillet or bowl or whatever you're um, you're working with. Let's go back a little bit to measuring, and um, I have measuring spoons here that I purchased at Bed Bath and Beyond, and I love them because there's so many different sizes of them. They um, go from one tablespoon all the way to one eighth of a tablespoon and they interlock with each other which is kind of nice so that I don't have to have them loose like this. I can I can put them all together and let them stack. So uh, another must have for your kitchen. So as I said before, um, when you're reading a recipe, read it all the way through and understand uh, the symbols that may be in your recipe. It may not always say one tablespoon. It may say one capital T or one TBS P and that stands for tablespoon. A small T stands for teaspoon or TSP stands for teaspoon and C stands for cup. So just kind of know that. Um, that was brought to my attention by my husband when he was actually looking at one of my recipes and he didn't know what a capital T meant. And so um, just something very important. And it's important when you're looking, um, especially at baking, to use and follow um, the recipe exactly because um, baking is such a science and there's um, reasons that you use so much ingredients, um, so much liquid, so much dry. And that um, is very important that you're using the right utensils when you're measuring. So just as some basics, make sure that um, you have some of these basics, that you have uh, the nesting uh, measuring cups for dry ingredients. You have a wet ingredient uh, measuring cup or from Pampered Chef, or I'm not sure where else you might get these, but this is a double-sided where you can do water or liquid and dry ingredients. Uh, bench scraper is optional, but I tell you, I love mine. Um, always want a straight edge spatula, or you can use a straight edge knife just to make sure that you're leveling off your ingredients. And then your measuring spoons. And also a nice uh, cutting board. This one I particularly like because it's got a recessed inside edge so if there's liquid, a little bit of liquid in whatever I'm cook, uh, cutting, it's not going to run all over my counter. So it's, But it does have another side that's just flat that I use if I'm cutting bread or something that doesn't have um, liquid that's going to run all over. So um, just some of the basics to know um, when you start cooking. And uh, some of you have been uh, cooking a long, long time. Some of you have just started to cook. And so this is just some back to basics when you are trying to um, learn and um, cook for your family, which usually is a healthier version of whatever you could buy fast food wise. So anyway, that's my back to basics informational video for you. You take care. God bless. Thank you.